New Zealand sure has a big list of endangered birds to its name, and the fairy tern is most definitely no exception, as it is in fact the rarest of all of our endemic bird life, with less than 40 birds residing in the entirety of New Zealand, and it is at a very real chance of extinction. I welcome you back to New Zealand Bird of the Week, where I will cover in as much detail as possible the appearance, ecology and threats this bird species faces. I hope you enjoy. This small, dainty tern, of which a relic population of fewer than a dozen pairs, survives between Whangarei in the north and Auckland to the south, is gravely threatened by predators and disturbance by humans, making them one of the most intensively monitored species in the country in terms of conservation. The New Zealand subspecies of fairy tern is small, with pale grey upper parts and white underparts, with the wings having a dark grey outer web on the outer primary. Breeding adults have a completely yellow-orange bill and a black cap, which covers the crown and nape. Fairy terns are confined to Australia, New Zealand and New Caledonia, with the endemic New Zealand subspecies currently breeding at four sites in New Zealand, that being the Waipu Sandspit, Mangafai Sandspit, Pakiri Rivermouth and at the Papakanui Sandspit on the southern headland of the Kaipara Harbour. Birds nest on exposed sandspits, clear of vegetation and large debris, and where shell accumulates above spring-high water. Fairy terns forage in adjacent estuaries, or a short distance out to sea, with birds of all ages also gathering around estuaries and harbours between Whangarei and Auckland. Once widespread around the North Island coast and at river mouths in the South Island, although some historical records are doubtful, as these small terns were not recognised in New Zealand until the 1950s, meaning a few accounts may or may not be accurate. Fairy tern range rapidly contracted during the 19th and 20th centuries due to the influx of predators arriving into the country through European colonisation. Modification to their coastal habitats and human disturbance during breeding also had a negligible impact on their population, with all of these factors continuing to impact them to the present day. Conservation efforts at breeding sites primarily concentrate on predator control, including gulls and harriers, cordoning off nests to exclude human and vehicle disturbance, as well as minimising coastal development impacts. An example of such impacts would be a case in 2015, when some areas of mangroves were removed from the Mangafai Harbour, which ended up reducing the size of the first clutches of most mature breeding females, thus limiting the number of hatchlings that could have been potentially born without the mangrove's removal. Breeding success is also frequently squandered by environmental factors, like high tides and storms, which can not only diminish foraging ability, but can also lead to the desertion of eggs and chicks. When necessary, nests are intensively managed, either through gradual repositioning through higher elevations or sandbagging in order to protect nests from rapid sand movement. Public awareness and education of the birds and their situation is ongoing, particularly in communities adjacent to fairy tern nesting areas. All of the terns breeding sites are increasingly popular recreational destinations, and precautions will need to continue to be enforced if the species is to survive. Thanks for watching this episode of New Zealand Bird of the Week, and I very much hope you enjoyed it. For next time, you have the opportunity to vote for the yellow-eyed penguin, one of our unique penguin species. On an unrelated note, I am extremely happy to see the tremendous amount of subscribers I have gained over the last week, and I most definitely thank Ben for collaborating on the Kaka video, and introducing all of you newer guys to the channel, I really hope you enjoy it here. I will be trying to get out a holiday special video that was initially planned for Christmas, but was since delayed, and I also wish to release more unique paleontology content, since the topic is in my channel name but hasn't really had too much time delved into it yet, which I hope to rectify this year. 2019 is sure looking great, and I hope to see this channel reaching ever newer heights in the new year. I can't wait to experience it all with you. I'm Henry the Paleo Guy, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!